With tech still dominating business headlines, often reporting growth and profits, even in this economy, why is the story so different for those on the ground looking for jobs right now? Is the dream over? Are we in a tech recession? Whatever it is, getting hired feels incredibly difficult, and we need to understand why. Without going back too far, we still need to talk about what happened in 2020 to 2021. As you know, tech companies were hiring like crazy because of the COVID-19 pandemic. It sped up the shift to digital everything. Remote work, cloud computing, online shopping, entertainment, you name it. With everyone stuck at home, the demand for online services skyrocketed. Tech companies who were flush with cash from zero interest rates had easy capital, wild valuations. They just went on a hiring frenzy. We even saw something called blitz scaling, a practice where companies were hiring incredibly fast, often bringing people on board before specific roles or projects were fully defined, partly to hoard talent and prevent competitors from doing the same. So we had companies like Meta, Amazon, Google, and so many others adding thousands upon thousands of employees to their payroll. There was fierce competition for talent, which also drove up salaries and perks. I was actually interviewing during this time and I got four competing offers. I don't think I'm ever gonna see something like that again, at least for a long while. But here's the thing, that level of growth and hiring wasn't sustainable. The world opened back up and consumer behavior changed yet again. Companies that had overhired in anticipation of hyper growth found themselves with a bloated workforce. And now this brings us to the correction phase. We started seeing widespread layoffs across the tech sector starting in late 2022 with Twitter. It peaked in 2023 with at least 264,000 cuts. The FANG tech giants or FANGMULA or MANGA or whatever the acronyms are nowadays had significant job cuts. Companies were recalibrating or right-sizing their workforce after a period of unprecedented growth. It's now a more normal growth trajectory with a focus on efficiency and profitability. At this time, we're actually seeing the same levels of demand for engineers at a pre-COVID level. So it's harder to get hired right now because the volume of available jobs has decreased when you compare it to the peak of the pandemic boom times. Now the tech industry doesn't exist in a vacuum. It's influenced by the broader economic climate. And right now there's some significant macroeconomic things going on that are impacting hiring decisions. One of the biggest concern is inflation. Banks around the world have been raising interest rates to try to cool down inflation. This makes everything from mortgages to corporate loans more expensive. Now that it is more expensive for companies to borrow money, it can influence their investments in expanding new projects or features, which impacts hiring. In fact, you can see that there is an inverse relationship from the interest rate versus the demand for tech labor. And there's also the threat of a general economic recession if we're not already in one. Now, if you live in the United States or trade with the US, which is basically the world, there's a tariff war going on, and I think we're gonna feel the impacts of it soon enough. Could it become a global or federal recession? Maybe, but I'm not an economist, and economists have differing opinions on the likelihood and severity of a recession. A whole bunch of them are saying that the outlook is not good. Whether it's here or not, or if it's coming, the uncertainty itself can make companies become more risk adverse. And then we can add on the global supply chain issues and geopolitical instability further contributes to economic uncertainty. So the fear of a potential recession and the uncertainty because of everything are making companies hesitant about big investments like opening new factories or in the case of software, starting new projects, which can lead them to freezing hiring, reducing budgets and prioritizing cash preservation. This is a natural response to potential downturns. We do it too, as everyday consumers. Companies are prioritizing financial stability and resilience in the face of economic headwinds, which means fewer job openings. And another big part of why it feels like a tech recession for so many is the picture that's painted online, on sites like Reddit, tech forums, or even YouTube. You're bombarded with stories of layoffs, ghosting after interviews, and people submitting thousands of applications without getting a response. This sometimes contributes to what's called survivorship bias. The people who are most actively posting about their job search struggles are often those who are currently in the thick of it and having a difficult time finding a job. People who successfully landed a job might not be spending as much time broadcasting that, or if they do post, their success stories tend to get less engagement than negative experiences, because we all love the misery porn. This can skew your perception of the overall market, making it seem like everyone's struggling, when in reality, there are still people finding jobs. They're just less visible. 
This constant exposure to negative anecdotes from others who are struggling reinforces your own personal difficulties and can lead to something called cognitive reinforcement. This is where every rejection you experience and every negative post you read just confirms your belief that the market is terrible, making it harder to see any positive signs or maintain optimism. What happens between your personal experience and the online narrative creates a strong feeling of a recession, even if the official economic indicators don't perfectly align. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, or perhaps the incredibly powerful, slightly unsettling, autocomplete machine in the room, AI. We have the CEO of Salesforce saying that they're not planning on hiring engineers this year because of AI. Zuckerberg has said AI could replace the work of mid-level software engineers at Meta. And Alphabet Sundar Pichai said that AI was writing more than 25% of new code at Google. While I firmly believe AI won't make developers obsolete, as I discussed in, in the video up, up there, it's definitely changing how companies operate and what skills they prioritize. They're looking at these tools and asking, can AI do this job or at least part of this job more efficiently or cheaper than a human? And for some tasks, that answer is yes. This doesn't necessarily mean mass firing of developers and replacing them with robots, at least not yet and not on a large scale. But it does mean that companies might need fewer developers. For example, if AI can help with writing boilerplate, debugging, or even creating basic applications as proof of concepts, a team might be able to accomplish the same amount of work with fewer people. Based on some research, wait, 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 that's the opposite point of what I'm trying to make. This one here is very recent research released in May that says workers in computer and math occupations reported that generative AI saved them 2.5% of time. Time on work saved directly correlated with how much time they spent using AI during work hours. So there are benefits in time savings, especially as we are still learning to live and work with AI. As companies integrate AI into their workflows, the type of roles they need will probably change. They might need more people who can work with AI, manage systems, and work on higher level architectural and problem solving challenges. The shift in required skills means that even if there are jobs available, they might be looking for a different kind of developer than they were a few years ago. And this is already happening. There's actually a small growth in tech jobs right now, but these listing increasingly have AI skills listed as requirements. Now let's look at how the financial side of things are impacting hiring. This actually ties in closely with the macroeconomic concerns we discussed earlier. During the pandemic boom, many tech companies prioritized growth over profitability. There were cases where they were practically giving away their product or even paying users so they could increase their market share. It was literally growth at any cost. However, with the shift in the economic climate and the increased pressure from investors, the focus moved towards efficiency and profitability. Companies are under pressure to keep their expenses in check, and payroll is often the largest expense. If a company announces a large hiring push, investors might see that as an increased spending without a guaranteed return, which might negatively impact the stock price. On the flip side of that, announcements of cost-cutting measures like layoffs now seem to be viewed positively by investors as a sign of fiscal responsibility. This creates a dynamic where tech companies are incentivized to be much more conservative with their hiring and to demonstrate to investors that they are managing their costs effectively. They want to do more with less. Instead of hiring more people to handle increased workloads, companies are looking for ways to increase the productivity of their existing workforce, like with using AI. Companies like Meta, for example, talked about their year of efficiency, which involves significant cost-cutting measures, including layoffs. We've actually been seeing this a lot in company earning calls in public statements. Just pay attention to how often they mention efficiency, productivity, and cost management. They're hiring for roles that can directly contribute to profitability in some form or another. And as a job seeker, they wanna see how your skills and experience can contribute to revenue growth or cost savings. I work in the startup world and we're seeing the same thing in VC-backed startups. Funding has slowed down and investors are pushing their companies to become profitable rather than just focusing on growth. This means startups are being more cautious with their hiring and are focused on building leaner teams. And now we're at the last and most obvious point of discussion there are just more competitions for fewer jobs. When you combine all of those things that we just talked about, the result is a significantly reduced number of job openings in the tech industry compared to the peak in 2021 and 2022. The number of people looking for tech jobs have remained high or even increased. The tech industry with its high salaries and good benefits has been a very attractive career path for a long time. This attracted a lot of people to learn coding and pursue tech careers through boot camps, online courses, and traditional degrees. 
Tech degrees awarded even increased last year. And then, of course, you have layoffs that put a lot of experienced people back on the job market. So you have a situation where there are fewer open positions and a larger pool of qualified candidates competing for each one. And entry roles in particular are screwed. They are super competitive because it's the gateway into the industry. And there's a large number of graduates from your traditional university as well as boot camps shooting for the same positions. Entry roles tend to be a net negative for at least the first few months to a year. And many companies are rationalizing the use of AI in the hands of mid or seniors that will produce the same as a junior in addition to their work without taking away time costs to level up a junior. I do think that rationale is misguided, but it's the reality of everyone focusing on efficiency right now. And then you have the pressures from those who are recently laid off who are willing to downlevel themselves just to get a job. So the competition isn't only about having the right skills anymore, it's about having relevant experience in the same industry as the company you're applying to and being able to effectively articulate your value to that company. And referrals are necessary because there's a deluge of AI applications that recruiters have to deal with, which I talk about in, in this video if you want to hear more about my short time as a hiring manager. The long and short of it is that sometimes it's hard to figure out who's a real human or not. And then there's the interview process that also has become way more rigorous. My friend who's currently looking right now just told me about her ninth interview with a company, which is the highest number of interviews I've heard of for an IC so far. And if you have a similar story about insane interview loops going on right now, let's talk about it in the comments. And with more applicants per role, companies can afford to be way more picky. So interview loops are longer and the bar for technical skills and problem solving seems to be a lot higher right now. It's a classic supply and demand issue. And as for pay, there's some downward pressure on pay, but I'm still seeing salaries on the high side. The big difference is that companies are requiring more experience for the same roles. It's really hard to find a job right now, but are we actually in a tech recession? I don't actually think so. Not in tech, at least. In terms of business news, if it's not talking about tariffs, it's talking about tech, specifically AI. The tech industry is still a massive and growing sector with a lot of opportunity. The volume of open jobs is actually slowly increasing. A lot of the growth is driven by AI, either directly like machine learning or AI engineering roles or data science to work with the data training in the models or something. Or it's indirect where companies are using AI tools and are requiring it as part of the dev workflow. So you want to focus on building and demand skills. And unfortunately for those who are against it, that does also include AI. And yeah, there's the usual advice about networking and building connections, but it's now extra important because of AI. Update your resume if you need to, to emphasize how you can help a company's efficiency and profitability, because that's what everyone's focused on right now. And be prepared for a potentially longer and more challenging job search than what we saw just a few years ago. It's a different landscape, but with the right approach and an understanding of why things are the way they are and where the trends are going, I think it's still possible to be successful. The demand for skilled problem solvers who can build and innovate still exists even if the path to those roles are a bit steeper now. So my goal was to provide some clarity on a really frustrating situation. If you feel like you learned something or this video resonated with you in some way, do me a favor and hit that like. It would really help me out. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. I'm definitely leading more into the tech, AI, career, and industry content if you're interested in that. And maybe we'll even do a vibe coding session one of these days. Tariffs? Tariffs? Talking about tariffs? Tariffs? <laughs> tariffs. 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 I don't know. Okay. We, we need to move on.